Would you get on a cruise ship while COVID-19 cases are skyrocketing? Hell, I wouldn't go on one if you paid me even before the pandemic. But no matter how fast this virus is spreading and cruise ships can always seem like floating Petri dishes, people are still going on them. I thought I might be going through menopause, so I Googled it. But like, it turns out the symptoms from menopause are like the same as alcoholism. That's stand-up comedian Jen Murphy. And on New Year's Day, she boarded a cruise ship out of Miami and got ready to perform for 1,800 people. But then, well, COVID, duh. (laughs) I'm Gustavo Ariano. You're listening to The Times, daily news from the LA Times. It's Wednesday, January 26th, 2022. Today, Jen Murphy gives us a hilarious and intense look into why, why she got on a cruise ship in the middle of a pandemic in the first place. She never did end up getting on that comedy stage, by the way. Instead, she ended up getting trapped in COVID cruise quarantine. So put on your admiral's hat and grab a bunch of hand sanitizer because we're going on a COVID cruise. All aboard for the story that shivers me timbers. Jen Murphy, welcome to The Times. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here with you. Okay, you're a stand-up comic. What's your favorite ocean joke? (laughs) My favorite one I was doing on the ship was uh, that I've never seen so many grown men eating ice cream cones. They're all walking around because they have them for the kids, so there's all these grown men walking around just with holding ice creams, like in the elevator, just licking, like zoning out, just licking ice cream. Oh, God. I could just <laughs> imagine that even grossed you out more in COVID. And people are just <laughs> licking and dripping and, uh, oh, geez. Okay, so things were going good for you as a stand-up comic right before the pandemic. I mean, you hadn't hit quite that Bill Burr level of success, but you weren't definitely in a better place than Michael Richards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good reference. I like it. <laughs> yes, I was doing very well before the pandemic. I feel like the older I get, like, the more time I spend just, like, plugging holes. <laughs> I'm just like, what's leaking? I actually had my whole year my booked right. out for 2020, and then the beginning of March, slowly everything just started getting canceled. And, of course, I believed them when they're like, no, two weeks. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, this will all be back. And here I am. In the closet, recording a podcast with me. <laughs> <laughs> my cousin Victor, he once wanted to be a stand-up, and he's hilarious, but he tried it once and just bombed, and people tell me I should try it, but uh-uh, it's not going to happen. I know it's an art form. I respect it. So why do you do it? I love it, and it's funny because I was always a very shy person, and I had an acting teacher in New York. I wanted to do theater, live theater, Broadway, and I thought I was very dramatic because I was depressed a lot, but my acting teacher told me, he's like, Every time you try and be dramatic, it makes me laugh. (laughs) He's like, you need to do stand-up. And I'm like, no way. But then I did it one time, and I loved it, and I've been addicted ever since. It was like your Barry moment, except without the assassinations and all that. (laughs) Well, maybe. I'm not going (laughs) to tell you that part. (laughs) So so stand-up isn't your career. It's your reason for life itself. And then the pandemic hit. So what's your when the pandemic hit story? At first, it was just complete, like, fear and you know, just paranoia, like, because I was already just surviving as a comic. With stand-up comedy, or I guess any art form, it's like, you can have one great month and have no problem paying your rent, and then, you know, a bad month where you're scrambling. So to have all that work canceled was terrifying. And then unemployment hit, which Mm. that was like a godsend. I had never collected unemployment in my life, so it wasn't wasn't in my head that that was going to happen. So what a lifesaver that was. And I was able to survive until it ended, and then I had to get on a cruise ship again. Yeah, I mean, the <laughs> ends, you still have to pay rent, groceries, all yeah. of that. You need work. You know COVID is real, though, and a risk, but seeing people, talking to people, that's your livelihood. And I get that, but why on earth go find some work with a stand-up gig on a cruise ship? I know, and, you know, this was part of my fear when I put out the article in the LA Times because I knew I was like, oh, I'm going to get some backlash of people being like, Well, you idiot, you got on a cruise ship. And I did. (laughs) But you have to understand also, I mean, I was very safe and I held out almost two years. I didn't, I was very safe. And I never got COVID in that whole time. 
And then finally, I thought, you know what? I This is the difference with a cruise ship. You can make the money in one week for your whole rip, or for mine. Oh, wow. Whereas, yeah, I can scramble and go get a job. I babysit or, you know, do random stuff where you're going to make $50 a day. It's just, it's just, you, I, I finally thought, like, I got to go back and just get that chunk of money. Like, I got to be able to pay my rent. I had been falling behind in the last couple months since unemployment ended. So I just, I felt like it was worth the risk. And, well, I learned my lesson. <laughs> How did you prepare yourself for getting on board? I was very safe even getting on the ship because, you know, obviously I knew that, that COVID was a problem and the ship was very safe too. I, I'm not blaming them at all for anything. And I went and got tested three times in the seven days prior to board the ship and I was all negative. And then when we get on the ship, they test us because if you test positive, then you're off. And I tested negative getting on. I, I described that scene of boarding where, I mean, 1,800 strangers. Uh, how did that feel? I can't say I'd be freaked out because I wouldn't be getting on a cruise ship in the first place. I think if I had to stand with those 1,800, I wouldn't be getting on either. But <laughs> luckily, when I work on the cruise ship, I'm considered part of the crew. And because most of them are on it for a couple months, they're not boarding at that time. So I really walked on by myself through the back entrance. So that felt very safe to me. I just had to go through security, go get tested, and then get on. But outside, there was, I mean, a line that's like blocks long of people. And when you look mm. at that line, you're like, oof, do I want to do this? <laughs> oof is right. Oy, oy, oy. We'll be back with Jen's COVID cruise story after a quick break. So, Jen, the first night of the cruise, you weren't scheduled to perform. What did you do? Was life on the cruise ship like those TV commercials where everyone is happy from the toddlers to the grandmas going down the water slides? They really are. I have to say, <laughs> the first day of a cruise ship, it is very joyful. People get on. They're so excited. They've got the DJ at the top of the boat that's just pumping music as people are, you know, boarding. They all go get their first round of buffet. <laughs> and it is it's exciting and I did not have a show the very first night so I went to the comedy club just to check it out but it was very safe we all had masks and there was another comedian performing and I saw him the show was completely packed I mean people like standing against the walls wow so I was so excited I'm like oh my god I get to perform here tomorrow you know it's like 400 people in there probably so the next night I was supposed to do two shows but I never made it. I never made it to the stage. Oh, my God. Yeah, you go to sleep and you had this pounding headache and your throat was super, super dry. Yeah, so that when I went to sleep that night, I woke up probably three hours after I went to bed, like two in the morning, and I just felt awful. Uh. So then in the next morning, I talked to the other comic and I was like, I'm supposed to do two shows, but like my throat is killing me. I can't talk. And he said, oh, just go to the medical center and get some cough drops. <laughs> So that's what I did. And when I walked into the medical center, I, I, I could barely speak. I was like, I just need a cough drop. And they're like, they're like, uh, no, you don't. <laughs> Sit down. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> and then I, I didn't think I had COVID at all. I was like, can you just give me some Advil? I'm just, I just need to sleep. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, then the, the doctor, he looked angry because he was the same doctor that had given me the test when I boarded. He's like, what are you doing here? Like night and day, happy. Now you're like, oh, you messed it up for me, man. And he's like, what did, did you did you have symptoms yesterday and you didn't tell me? I was like, no, I don't know what's wrong. I, I think I just have a cold. And then I got very defensive. So I was like, people still get colds. <laughs> and then he gave me a test and he was like, uh, go pack your bags. You're done. You recorded some Instagram stories to document your experience on the cruise ship. And there's this funny one where... You described the ship's doctor basically giving you step-by-step -step instructions on how to use a cough drop. The doctor gave me these cough drops and he explained to me how they work. He said, you don't swallow them. You just suck on them. They're not going to fix the problem. They'll just make you feel better temporarily. In case you're wondering how dumb foreigners think we Americans are. He thought I didn't know how cough drops worked. 
Oh, my God. I was like, how dumb does he think I am? He just explained how cough drops work. Like you're a toddler or something. I know. <laughs> it was pretty funny. But who knows? You know, if he had to explain it, maybe there was somebody that put that whole cough drop in their mouth, swallowed it, and choked. <laughs> We don't know. Well, it was probably in the New England Journal of Medicine at some point. So it was total precaution on his part. So you get the positive test. Then what happened? Date on um, my comedy career. On January 1st, I boarded a cruise ship to perform for eight nights. On today, January 2nd, I tested positive for the Omni. I went back to my room. I packed my bags. I waited. He said, just wait there. And it was probably about two hours. I was just sitting and waiting. And then finally, somebody came and knocked on my door. And as I opened the door, there's these two men outside. (laughs) There's a woman, a nurse, with fully, like she's going into surgery, just covered head to toe with masks and and surgical gown. And, uh, And then there was two men who were holding an apparatus that was like, you know, when they spray chemicals on weeds? Yeah. It's just like a, a long silver <laughs> tube, and they're, and they're just spraying. I mean, it was like clouds of mist outside my room. Oh, my gosh. With disinfectant. And even the nurse was like, I'm choking. Like, we were both <laughs> coughing and choking on this disinfectant. They pretty much sprayed just a cloud around me to walk through. And then they made me stop with my luggage, and they sprayed it down so hard. And I was like, and then they're like, okay, carry your luggage. Like, they didn't carry it for me, so I was like, You're spraying disinfectant on my own luggage, and I'm the only one that's touching it. (laughs) But they were trying to be very safe. It was a little much. Sure. And then she walked me down the hall, and there was four security guards at the elevator, making sure nobody entered that area as I got into the elevator. When the elevator opened, one of the security guards reached in with a key, and he put his key in. And I was like, where am I going if you need a key to get to that floor? It was like slow motion. I watched as the nurse hit like the bottom button and I'm like, oh God, I'm going down to the bottom of the ship. So they brought me down to the basement where they put people that are ill. So I'm stuck for eight days in the basement of a ship in a room with no windows, but it does have lovely artwork. It's just like I'm looking at the it was like dead man oh, walking. Wow. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, what are you thinking? Uh, you know, you're going down to the bowels. It's like stuff you read in a Robert Louis Stevenson novel. What, what, what could possibly be going through your mind at that time? It was just so surreal. And it was just fear, too, because I'm like, if they're just going to take me down here and leave me. And the woman, when we got down, she opened up the door to my room and I went in and I remember it was like a movie. I remember just looking back at her, almost like a kid who's like, mom is leaving them. I'm just looking at her <laughs> and she was like, you're going to get some really good food down here. And she like smiled. like She was trying to think of something positive to say. And then she shut the door and I just sat there. It was hard to comprehend at first because this was day one of an eight day cruise. And they were like, you're not coming back up till the cruise is over. In case you want to know how very seriously they take this quarantine, I don't even have a key to my room. I'm not allowed to go out. Therefore, I can't get back in. So if you do leave, you're stuck. (laughs) You're stuck wandering around the ship. Maybe you would have turned into a ghost or something. Yeah, I don't know. I was wondering what would happen if I went out. (laughs) Because I know on cruise ships, I've also been told they have a jail in cruise ships. Yeah, the Huskow. Yeah, so I was like, do they put you in jail if you try to get out when you have COVID? Damn. I mean, I'm not a smoker, but there's got to be people who are smokers or something that are like, just start Jones and they're like, I'm getting out of here. I got <laughs> I got to get a puff in. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that person was the last time you had an interaction with a human being for the rest of the cruise ship. And so you're stuck in this tiny room, no windows, just... What Like, they, they gave you food in hazard bags. How did you spend the rest of your time? Did they at least give you a tennis ball to bounce against the wall? <laughs> no. <laughs> and my my remote control to my TV didn't even work. Ay, ay, ay. I had to get up every time I wanted to change the volume, which is okay. I didn't change that much since there was only, like, five channels. No, there was not much to do in there. Uh, I did not speak to another human. 
and I found out how they deliver food because I was sleeping very peacefully. And all of a sudden, that first day, there's just a loud, like, bang on my door. And some guy yelling, dinner! Oh, my God. Got a knock on the door. My dinner is here. This is the most exciting part of the day. I'm supposed to be wearing a mask. what I do three times a day. I get a knock on the door. And then with embarrassment and shame, I open my door and drag in whatever food they've provided for me. And that's what happened three times a day for the next eight days. It was like breakfast, lunch, dinner. But it got to a point where I knew around the five minute mark that he comes. <laughs> So I would I would just stand waiting at the, like that was the excitement of my day was him delivering. That, the food. that sounds like the you know the scene where they had Tim <laughs> Robbins at the Shawshank Redemption in solitary. It, it was definitely solitary, but in a much nicer room than he had. Of course, <laughs> they they did give me a nice bed, even though there was no window. It's day three of this Omicron quarantine in the basement of a cruise ship. You feel like sending me a message. I'll be alone for the next eight days. It's just weird when you have no concept of time. I mean, I had my phone that had the, the time on it, but other than that, if you turn off the lights, it's just completely dark the whole day that you're in there. Wow. It's kind of creepy. Oh my God. We'll have more after this break. So, Jen, how bad did COVID actually hit you? Um, I was sick. I I had a lot of, like, fever sweats. I would wake up in the middle of the night sweating a lot. Every time I sleep, I've been waking up with fever sweats and drenched. So I had to put a towel on my bed. This isn't the first time I've had to put a towel on my bed, but it is the first time that it's been from a fever. I'm actually grateful that I was sick because I slept a lot, thank God. If I had been just wide awake and asymptomatic, it probably would have gone really insane. The second night, I did wake up in the middle of the night and really have like bad panic attack and anxiety only because all of a sudden I started thinking, is there a possibility I could die at the bottom of this cruise ship? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not the way I want to go out. Besides a jail, there's also a morgue and they just throw you into that morgue until... Uh. Until the cruise is over, they're not going to stop it just to get your body off, you know? They're like, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sit on this ice. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll notify your mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is turning dark. Let's get it a little bit lighter. So it was only one night that I had that panic. I felt better the next day. Like, you're, you're, that was your long night of the soul or a long dark night of the soul, however they call it in literature. Meanwhile, everyone's having fun around you. Well, yeah, that's one thing, too. I still have... You know, they have speakers on every floor so that you can hear the cruise director come through every day and announce all the fun activities that are going on. So he would come on and be like, guys, today we've got bingo and we're going to do the dating game in the lobby. And then, of course, he would announce the comedy shows every night. Every night we've got hilarious comedians. And I'm like, uh, I'm supposed to be up there. <laughs> At what point does just the existentialness of all of this hit you when you start doubting your career, your life, everything that brought you to this room in the bowels of a cruise ship? Um, it was it was right away, definitely day one or two. I think also the first three days is when I was the most sick. And I think anytime you're sick, you start to feel a lot more vulnerable, yeah. you know, so that and then being locked in the basement of a ship just sort of adds to that and you know i'm an older woman <laughs> i'm middle-aged and i'm single and i'm alone at the bottom of this ship so you can't help but just start questioning like what am i doing even though i'm older and i've been doing this a while i still just keep thinking like well you know it might change next month things might get way better i might be playing theaters 
like Bill Burr, Tom Segura, you know. But then it would, sometimes when your brain goes the opposite way, I'm like, this is this is the rest of my life, just yeah. struggling, trying to get any gig I can, even if it's in the middle of a pandemic. You can't help but go down that road of like, should I keep doing this or should I just go home and apply <laughs> at the bank down the street and be a somewhat normal person? And then your day six of isolation, you get a call, an actual human saying that the cruise ship was going to send you home sooner than expected with full pay, too, because that's when the CDC started to shorten its recommendations of isolation. When you heard that news, how did you feel? Oh, my God, I was ecstatic. It was so exciting. I still had two more days in there, but it made it way easier because all of a sudden like there was a light at the end of the tunnel it made the yeah. last two days so much more bearable because i knew i was getting off and flying home in time for sunday night football after all that forced self-reflection did you decide on any changes in your life i did actually i did i got very motivated to treat comedy more as a business than you know it's a tendency just that it's a lot of fun go out perform you know, we have a few drinks, hang out with other comedians, and I'm like, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to do this more as a business and not just uh, a hangout. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink a lot less. <laughs> but if that makes any sense. Oh, man. Jen Murphy, thank you for sharing your story with LA Times and talking about it with me. But before you go, one last joke, whatever, whatever you want to tell. Uh, just a good joke to make me laugh. Oh, does it have to be about the ship? No, it doesn't have to be about the ship. It, it just has to be family-friendly because this is a family-friendly show. Oh, okay. Well, I can tell you that another decision I made is that I tried to cut these bangs. Oh, nobody's going to be able to see it. I cut bangs because I feel like this is like the poor girl's Botox. <laughs> <laughs> when I see lines on my face, I just cover it up with some bangs. That's, that's, that's what I've done, too, since I got off the ship. That's a good class consciousness joke. Jen, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Thank you. And that's it for this episode of The Times, daily news from the LA Times. Tomorrow, Omicron is causing chaos at schools. We'll check in with some kids to see how they're handling it. Our show is produced by Shannon Lynn, Denise Guerra, Kasha Brasalian, Melissa Kaplan, Ashley Brown, and Angel Carreras. Our engineer is Mario Diaz. Our editor is Kinsey Morgan. Our executive producers are Hasmin Aguilera and Shawnee Hilton. And our theme music is by Andrew Epen. Like what you're listening to? Then make sure to follow The Times on whatever platform you use. Don't make us the Puccio Podcasts. I'm Gustavo Ariano. We'll be back tomorrow with all the news and desmadre. Gracias. <laughs>